watching Jack drones. Right, quick test to see if um, this sort of setup's working. I've got the um, iPhone wisely connected to my Apple using sort of the uh, built in built mirroring basically. And I've got the Phantom switched on so you can actually see the app and you can actually see the camera going as well. It gives you a sort of rough idea of quality. It's very low light in this room here, as you can see, but you can see it does pretty good quality on the camera. So it's not too bad. So we've gone through the firm upgrade we did on the previous um, one. So I'll quickly run over the app, give you the ideal type of settings I use for my app itself, which is very straightforward. I tend to sort of go with default stuff. There's a few things I do a tweak in the app. So I'm just going to show you this and a few, show you a few couple of new things that the uh, app does on the Phantom 4, which I didn't realize. So let's get to it. So there's the app in front of you. As you know, it's indoors, got the props off anyway, so no worries that. You've got the red lights at the front of your Phantom, and you also have uh, your flashing lights at the back, which is normal. Now, there's a new feature in here that allows you to turn the red lights on the front when you take a picture. So if I take a picture, and you'll notice in the screen on the app, it's showing red around um, this bit here. It's red, because that's the front front lights. If I press to take a photograph, ah, you won't actually show it. The actual red lights go off, then it takes a picture, comes back on again. So if, obviously, if you're nighttime flying, which should it's not a good idea to do, but you, you can turn the red lights off when you are. It, it does it either when you're recording, or when you're actually taking pictures. So if I slide it into the recording mode, press record. There you go. It's recording now. So you can now see the red's gone off on the screen itself. And when I stop recording, now the red light comes back on. So that takes away anything at the front that may catch the camera. So I think that's a neat little trick that is. That can be found on all the menu bits here. So uh, if we go back, so first of all, just to run through the settings I, I use on the app itself. So, so on the photographs, I always do single shot and image size always 16.9 because otherwise if you do 14.3, you'll notice on the screen in a sec, it cr normally crunches it down, but it's not actually showing you at the moment. Brings the image down, crunches it down, making it a bit more stumpy. I don't like that sort of stuff. So we do it, I always do it on 16, it's much easier. Image format, always do JPEG plus RAW, just in case you want to do some changes afterwards. I tend to shoot and upload to Facebook or social media. Images are pretty good, they're, they're great. But sometimes I might want to play with a few of them. So make sure the RAW file's there to do that as well, nice and easy. White balance is standard, leave that as auto. Seems to do quite well. now. These are sort of, if you want to fine tune, we're talking about fine tuning another time, just go through what I use. The, the color settings, sometimes I use D-Log, but apparently on the D-Log on here, it actually makes this screen on mine go a bit gray. As you can see, it shows a little bit gray. I don't know why it's doing that, I shouldn't do that. Um, so at the moment, I think that, that might be a, a bug it, bug. Because I always shoot, shoot D-Log on my uh, Osmo as well. And you also got the other, uh, these sim like they, they allow you to sort of make more changes. If you do D-Log, you get more changes in post to add filters and effects. And if you want to play about the file, you can. But um, other than that, normally I just literally fly on normal. So it's much better playing about with some of these settings to work out what's best for you. Because every, everybody's different to each other. Video mode, very simple. Always shooting 4K. Some weird reason is I'm, I'm shooting 4K and also I've got NTS, NTSE selected, which gives me that extra one frame per second give me 25 frames per second but some reason here it's not showing 25 frames per second even though I am using the NTSC um, here it's not showing me how to do it I can drop down to the uh, 384 by 26 and choose 30 frames um, obviously on the, the full 4, 4 doesn't doesn't matter or oh, 4k is pretty good 24 frames a second uh, if you go too fast anyway, it tends to be a bit blurry. So if you're, if you're doing fast stuff, then shoot on 1080p, which gives you much more higher frame rates anyway. So um, NTSS is quite explanatory, white balance style that covers that. Now on this other little spanner bit, you've got grid mode, central points. Grid mode may be quite good to do in your grid lines, because then you can check to make sure you've got proper horizontal in the air. And if not, you can then use the gimbal to adjust it to make sure it brings horizontal horizontal position straight so that's good to go with I don't I always keep it on none so I can normally tell by whether it's flat or not um, center points so you can actually mark in circle crosshair if you want to use those I don't tend to use any of those 
square lines, different options you can do to show your center points. I use it on none, so long as it's all in the frame, I'm happy with that. Anti flick, I don't normally mess with. File indexing, always put continue because when you start dropping the files onto your Mac or PC and you're storing in a folder, I normally do mine by um, location and then, then the place it is, and then I'll obviously then store the files in that way. So if you're shooting something on the same location, exact same day, doing different bits, they're not so you don't want the files overriding each other, so it's much more easier if you do continuous and it create a continuous file all the time. So then there will never be the same file name. Uh, exact same as one you've done previous or if you're clumping all your files together for like the whole year flying your phantom then again because the continuous numbers go in you'll never override anything so it's easy that way if you do reset it'll reset the counter and you're nine times out of ten if you go back and film again you'll probably start from uh, 01, 02 and 03 and that probably end up overwriting your files if you do put them in all one folder so I keep on continuous much more nice and easier that way but format SD card here and reset it set settings uh, what else we got that's it on that bit. And then the other option is I think it's camera. Now I'm trying to find where I've found that red light bit now. <laughs> I'm not sure it's on the span of this video. Video caption overexposed. There you go, there you go. Front LED auto turn off. So that still allows you to um switch on the red LEDs when you're not recording and when you take a picture it turns it off if you put record on it turns it off on recording if you want the red LED lights down all the time then you just slide that back to the off position and the red LEDs will stay on whether you're recording or taking pictures or not so I'm just going to keep mine actually switched on so that's um, basically my, my settings for my DJI Phantom 4 so it's quite straightforward uh, always check to make sure, like in these other settings here, version numbers to apps, make sure you run the current um, app version. Also make sure your aircraft version run on the latest firmware, because upgrading the firmware always keeps the aircraft going. You don't want to fly a buggy aircraft, it's, if it's got bugs in it, it's going to cause problems. Remote control version, also make sure that's the latest version as well, if not, get it updated. And obviously you've got your flight control serial number here, which is unique to your own Phantom itself. Um, what else we got on here? I think I'll change on there. We've now got live streaming to um, YouTube, which has been around the net quite some time now. And also, you've got the uh, live streaming to Facebook. The only trouble with Facebook, it only live stream it to your own personal account. So, if you've created lots of groups under your Facebook and you wanted to stream to a particular group on Facebook you, you manage, you can't. It only allows you to stream it to your own Facebook. So, I'm hoping DJI will upgrade it later. So, when you go into it, allowing you to say, can I stream to a page I actually manage? That would be really easy. So unfortunately, when I do live streaming, I have to do at my own page, which is no good. I want it to be streamed to Jack Jones. But unfortunately, it doesn't allow me to do that. So don't do it a lot, but works pretty well. Works pretty well itself. So that's uh, my settings. So I hope that's helpful. If you use anything different that you find that works for you, give me a shout. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a website page once everyone sends me information to say, how you set your settings up, what, what you do. We'll put down different scenarios that work for different people. Then it gives other people that start in this hobby, especially starting with the new Phantom 4, how they can actually try and use different settings to find out which one best works for them. If, you, if you're starting from the beginning, it's very, very sort of hard to say, what, what do I need to set it as? So let's, so you tell, if, you wanna, if you're watching this, let me know what settings you use. Take some screenshots of your app, send them to me, and then what it is, I'll create a little uh, page I'm going to put all the details on there saying these are the sort of you know, uh, overall settings that other people use. And that way I can play that with your settings to see how well they come out. And people can do use say that I've got to see if that works for the good for them or not. And hopefully we get a balance of what works good and what, what sort of good pictures we get. So I've seen some fantastic videos out there. But obviously they don't tell you what settings they actually use. Whether it's all shot straight from the Phantom or there's a lot of post stuff happening afterwards. I um, hope you enjoy that. So thanks for watching and I hope for this recording works out. So cheers. Remember, hit that sus well, subscribe button down here if you haven't already subscribed. Thumbs up for the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.